Welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Bethel Assembly, located in Oshawa, Canada. Our mandate is to spread the good news and to influence our surrounding communities. We hope your time in this place of worship, love, communion, service, and community will be a glorious and life-transforming experience. This is a place for your entire family, a place for you and me. We are a community church that deeply cares about you. All ministries were created to meet individuals' needs. In Bethel Assembly, we are a Bible-believing church charged with spreading the Word of God throughout the region of Durham. We are interested in your God-given potentials and wanted to help you to be able to fulfill your God-given destiny. We, we care about you. Welcome to your Bethel experience. morning. I'm going to be briefly talking about God's appointed time for miracles. God's appointed time for miracles. Let's read the book of John chapter 11, verse 1 to verse 6, and then we'll read from 37 to 44. John chapter 11 from verse 1, we'll read to verse 6. Amen. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her ears, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters, I want you to take note of that, sent unto him, they sent unto Jesus, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Verse 5. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Let's go down to verse 37. 37. We'll read to verse 44. And some of them said, after, you know, Lazarus died, people began to say among themselves, could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, of course that this man should not have died. Jesus, therefore again, groaning himself, coming to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was, said, uh, that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. For he had been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wilt believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had not spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Verse 44, which is the last one that we we'll read. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, Lose him and let him go. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. God's appointed time for miracle. Miracle in the Latin word means miraculon. Amen. Object of wonder. And C.S. Lewis defined miracle as an interference with nature by supernatural power. An interference with what? With nature by supernatural power. Miracle is an obvious, the word 
Obvious is what qualifies it. An obvious manifestation of what only God can do. Amen. Amen. Beloved, I'm here to let you know this morning that your life is a miracle. I said your life is a miracle. But you see, that miracle is waiting to be seen on a daily basis. Let me repeat that. You see, most of the time we are expecting a miracle. And that's true. But God is in the business of performing miracles in our life on a daily basis. You see, the moment you have Jesus in your life, the moment you have given your life to Christ, your life has been designed, ordained to continue to enjoy the miracles of God on a daily basis. And that's why I want to remind and assure someone that you don't have to look elsewhere for miracle. That miracle is you. I said that miracle is you. I said you are a miracle. You are a miracle. You see, when God created you, he did so in whose image? In whose likeness? God fashioned you in his own image and in his own likeness. And because you resembled God, you have the DNA of God, you are supposed to manifest the miracles of God on a daily basis and in every area of your life. This morning, I said we're going to be praying and we also share the word. But I want to briefly mention certain things for a believer, for a Christian, to enjoy the miraculous life. You see, it's something to know that I am ordained, created in the image of God. It's another thing to walk the talk. Most of us know what the scripture says. You've heard it before, you've read it, you've memorized it, but I want you to know that it is not enough for you to know what the scripture says, but you must live it. You must enjoy it. Principles of enjoying the miraculous life. The first one that I will mention is the obvious one. You must have Jesus in your life. You must do what? You must have Jesus in your life. Because if you don't have Jesus in your life, you will not be able to understand when miracle happens. You will think it is, you know, by accident. Some people will call it a lucky break. But when you have Jesus in your life, he is the one that will transform our ordinary life into a supernatural one. He's the one that will fill that ordinary vessel that you are looking at yourself as ordinary. He's the one that will fill you with his presence to do the miraculous. In the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 1. Luke chapter 10 verse 1. Jesus appointed 70 people here. 70. And after these things, the Lord appointed also 70. And he sent them. How many? Choose before his face into every city and place where he himself will come. How many of them? Seventy. Now, those seventies, are they the apostles only? They are who? Who are those seventies? Children of God. Believers. Those seventies are people like you and I. And Jesus sent them forth. Ordinary people. But because they have Jesus in their life, if you go down to verse 17, because they have Jesus in their life, they, each and every one of them came back with testimony. The Bible says they return with what? With joy. Someone is returning with joy. I said you are returning with joy. They returned with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us. Through whose name? Through thy name. I want you to tell yourself, I have a name. It is the name of Jesus. I have a name. By that name, my miracle is certain. It's guaranteed. It's assured in the name of Jesus. 
The moment you have life, uh, Christ in your life, you have been destined to live a miraculous life. Those seventies were ordinary people. Bible says they return. It is the joy of the Lord in you as a Christian that will be evident of the miracles of God. Because God will continue to do and do and do based on his word. In 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 8, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 8, for each and every one of us, who have received Christ. The Bible says, whom have not seen him, but you love him. In whom, though you have not seen him, yet you believe. Because of that belief, you will do greater things. And you know, it says, you receive with joy unspeakable, full of what? Of glory. All the Lord is asking for you is allow him to be the Lord of your life. Because it's the one that will fill your life with joy, with miracles on a daily basis. A life that has Christ is a life that will rejoice even in tribulation. It's a life that will rejoice even in affliction. Why? Because you know, you are sure that he who is in you is greater than those mountains, than those difficulties, than those circumstances. And I'm here to tell someone again. I want you to stop talking about your issues. But talk about the greatness of your God. When you continue to talk about an issue, you are giving that issue life. But when you talk about the greatness of your God, and you are going to talk to the issue, the issue will not have a choice because you are speaking in the authority of the name that you have received. Do I have a witness in the house? If you are a child of God, miracles must be daily occurrence in your life. In the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 17. Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 17. Thank you, Lord. Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 17. 3, verse 17. The scripture says, the Lord thy God is in the midst of thee. The Lord thy God that is in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save you. I said he will save you. Yeah. And when he saved you, the scripture says he will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest in his love. You will rest in his love. He will joy over you with what? With what? Because he is in the midst of you. Let Christ be the pillar of your life. You want to continue to enjoy the miraculous life. Christ must be the pillar of your life. Number two. And that takes me to the story of, you know, uh, our text. You must bring your request only to God. You must bring your request only to Jesus. Amen. Before I go to that test, let's look at Mark chapter 5 from verse 22. Mark chapter 5 from verse 22. The story of this man who came to Jesus. Mark chapter 5 verse 22. He came to Jesus with a request. Amen. He came to Jesus with a request. I have a request. My daughter is sick. I want you to do something. And he's a ruler of the synagogue. He came to Jesus. He could have gone to those Priests, Pharisees and the Sadducees in the synagogue. But he knew that these people are religious people. They don't have the power. Look at verse 23. He came to Jesus with a request. 
and besought him, my daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on him. And I know that she will live. Who are you? Talking to. Who are you asking for help? I said it earlier. There are a lot of us that we would rather talk to men about our issues. I still remember someone that will always personalize. It is my, my affliction. It runs in our family. And she believed it. That yes, this trend runs in their family. And she keeps personalizing it. Beloved, let me tell you this. You see, when this man came to Jesus, he was not ready to take no for an answer. And do you know that before you can get to Jesus, you have to at least meet the disciples. He refused to share with them the need in his life. I know you are disciples of the Lord, but I need to talk to the master. Who are you talking to about the issues of your life? If you go back to our text, Mary and Martha, amen. In that John chapter 11, look at verse 3. When Lazarus was sick, they sent message to who? To Jesus. Amen. They said, Lord, behold, the one that you love is sick. Come and do something. Who are you? Trusting for miracle. There are still some people that will lay the blame of issues in their life at the feet of the government. It is the government. They are not providing enough programming. They are not providing enough support. They are not providing enough this. Why don't you talk to the Lord? I need a miracle. They sent to Jesus. And they were very specific. Amen. And that's why the scripture says in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. It says, ask. When you ask, what will happen? It says you will receive. The scripture is not saying you should ask the pastor to ask on your behalf. There is a place of the pastor blessing you. But there are certain times that God wants you to do what? To ask. And so I want you to rise up. Rise up on your feet. Thank you, Lord. I want you to pray this prayer. And say, Father, I need a miracle. And I want you to personalize it. I don't know which miracle that you are trusting God for. Yours is going to be different from mine. But I know that I need a miracle. There are certain things in life that I cannot accomplish in my own strength, in my own ability, in my own capacity. I need a miracle. What about you? Why don't you ask him? Martha and Mary sent word to Jesus. Why don't you raise up your voice and ask the God of heaven for a miracle? Hmm. Is it a miracle of healing? Is it a miracle of fruitfulness? Is it a miracle of divine lifting? Ask him because only Jesus can provide answer. He's the miracle worker. In Jesus' name, we are praying. The Lord bless you. You can have your seats. Number one, I said you must watch principles of enjoying a miraculous life. You must be a child of God. Number two, you must learn not to keep quiet, but do what? Send your request to the right place. How many of us have sent letters to the wrong address before? And you will never get answer. Brethren, from today, I want you to make sure that anytime you need anything, talk to Jesus first. 
My children know this. Before they will ask us for anything, they will first of all go and pray about it. Now, it's not as if some of those things we cannot afford to abide for them. But no, what we are teaching them is that when you trust God first, he is the one that will take care of you. Number three, let's move on. It's what I will refer to as waiting for God's appointed time. Let me clarify that. Wait for God's appointed time. There is different timeline in life. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1. To everything there is a season. A time to every purpose under the heaven. And so there could be different timeline. Even our Lord Jesus Christ has a timeline. In that John chapter 11, look at verse 5, when they sent to Jesus, that Mary and Martha sent to Jesus, Lazarus is sick. The Bible said Jesus loved Martha and her sister, and he loved Lazarus. But look at what he said in verse 6. Even though he loved them. When he had heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still. Where? In the same place where he was. Now, the question is this. Why will Jesus delay? Why will he tarry? There is a timeline. That God has ordained for everything in life. Even our Lord Jesus Christ, before he began his ministry. In John chapter 7. John chapter 7. From verse 3. John chapter 7, verse 3. Jesus knew the importance of timeline. He knew the importance of timeline. They were encouraging him, Master, you are performing all these miracles, signs, and wonders. His brethren said unto him, Depart, go into Judea, that thy disciples may also see all these good works that you are doing, that everyone can see it. Praise God. Go down to verse 6. The timeline of heaven may be different from ours. But it's something that we need to understand. Jesus said unto them. What did he say? My time is not yet come. But your time is always what? Hallelujah. There is a timeline for God to visit a man. Go down to verse 8. And so sometimes as human beings, we want to run ahead of God. He told them, he said, go ye up unto the feast. I'm not going to go up yet, for my time is not yet fully come. I'm here to tell someone, you think God is late. You think he has forgotten about you. I'm here to let you know that there is a timeline in the calendar of heaven for everything about you. There is an appointed time. Wait for it. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. The scripture made us to understand that a day with our Lord is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like just one day. The same scripture is referenced in Psalm 90 verse 4. Psalm 90 verse 4. A day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years like a day. I don't want you to run ahead of God. The Bible says Jesus waited two more days. The question is this. Why did Jesus wait? Because he knows what he wants to do. He has your best interest at heart. But there is also something that can happen. In John chapter 2, John chapter 2, let's look at it from verse 3. John chapter 2, the wedding in Cana of Galilee. They invited Jesus. The mother of Jesus was there. And when they wanted wine, 
Look at what the mother of Jesus told them. The mother of Jesus said unto him, went to Jesus, they have no wine. Verse 4. And Jesus told her, woman, what have I to do with thee? By time is not what? It's not yet come. But look at verse 5. Even though Jesus told her mom, my time has not come yet. But his mother told those servants. He said, whatsoever he asked you to do, just do it. May I let someone know today that whatever the God of heaven is asking you to do, please do without asking questions. Please rise up and take this word of prayer. Even though Jesus told his mother, my time has not yet come. But we all knew what happened in that gathering. Jesus removed a social stigma from those couples. Because if the wine had finished, it would have been the talk of the town. Ah, they had the wedding and they knew that they don't have money to take care of everybody. In fact, the couples will have to probably leave town because of shame. But Jesus showed up. Even though he told the mother, my time has not yet come. You need a miracle. And there are times in which you need to ask God to fast track that miracle. I want you to pray and say, Father, fast track my miracle today in the name of Jesus. Fast track my miracle. I need a miracle today. I need a miracle today. Fast track it. In Jesus' name, we are praying. You're going to take another word of prayer. You see? Jesus waited two additional days. Do you know why? You see, while Jesus wants us to wait, it does not mean it's not working. While we are waiting, God is building capacity. He's building faith. He's building trust. He's building hope in us. Proverbs 13, 12. It says, hope defies, make the earth sick. But when the desire comes, when the desire arrives, it's a tree of life. You are going to pray. Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know, we are sure. If God waited for two additional days, it's because he wants to prove to all those naysayers that might say that maybe Lazarus fainted. He really did not die. Hallelujah. You know there are people that would take it upon themselves to disprove your miracle. That no, it did not really happen. We did the research. And according to this uh, encyclopedia. But Jesus waited. Why he is waiting? He wants you to continue to trust in him. It can never be late. I said it can never be late to help you. And so I don't want you to run ahead of God. The children of Israel, when, when Moses went to the mount, they could not wait. And they went to, uh, is it Aaron now? In Exodus chapter 32 verse 1. They said, give us a God. We want to see something. I want you to wait for your appointed time. Because God can never be late. Even Father uh, Abraham. Amen. God gave him a sure promise. I am going to bless you and make you great. Your seed will be multiplied. But when the promise was delayed, Mother Sarah came and said, let's help God. Genesis chapter 16 from verse 1 says, let's help God. But we know what happened. The child that was born was not a child of promise. While you are waiting, God is building capacity. Your testimony is loading. And so I want you to pray and say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, I will wait for my miracle because I know you will not disappoint me. I know you will not let me down. I refuse to accept any alternatives. I stand upon your word. Visit me today. Go ahead and pray. 
visit me today. Alternatives will come up, beloved. People will tell you, we know someone. We know someone that can do something for you. We know someone that can introduce you to another person. I want you to wait on the word of the Lord. It can never be late. In Jesus' name we are pray. You can have your seats. Two more and then we'll, we'll pray. Two more points. Number three, I say you must do what? Wait. Don't outrun God. God, everything in life that we pass through, he knows about it. And we know that all things, whatsoever it is that God allows you to pass through, he's working it out for your good. Number four, always listen. You see, while you are waiting, always listen to his voice and obey. Always do what? Listen while you are waiting. Always listen to the voice of the Lord. Always listen to his call and make sure you obey. If you go to, to our text again, John 11, look at verse 20. Now, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, how did she heard? She was eagerly, what? Waiting. She was expectant. There are some of us that will pray. And after praying, believing God for something, and we will ask you, sister, brother, how is it going? You say, well, I don't know. That's not an attitude of waiting. She was waiting eagerly. As soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. Praise God. Don't allow other voices to drown the voice of God. Do you know that there are people around that were winning and mourning with them? How did she know that Jesus was coming? Because she tuned out those people. She was not ready to listen to their own voice. She wanted to hear the voice of the Lord alone. You must always listen to the voice of God. The voice of Christ is that of joy. It's the voice that will bring hope. It's the voice that will bring peace and comfort. Praise God. Even though when Martha saw Jesus... The Bible says, you know, in verse 28, if you go down to verse 28, she sent for her sister Mary and said, Jesus is calling you. And in verse 29, the Bible says, Mary, quickly she arose and came to Jesus. You must be ready to listen and obey. In the midst of every of life's challenges, one of the things that we as Christians have not learned to do enough is to listen to the voice of God in the midst of tribulation and trials. She paid attention to the fact that Jesus, I know, is coming. He is a friend. And the scripture says, yes, Jesus loved Mary, loved Martha, loved Lazarus. They knew that he's going to come and they were eagerly waiting. And the moment they knew he was around, she obeyed the call. When they got to the tomb, this is another interesting story here. Jesus told them, roll away the stone. And the humanity in her came up again. They said, Jesus, is the stop there. We know you loved us. Say, but it's already four days. It's already stinking. Don't let's disturb. Let him rest in peace. But Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. The Lord is speaking to someone. I am the resurrection. Is there anything to add for me? Is there anything that has died in your career, in your womb, in your finances, in your business? The specialist is in the house. It's in your life. 
Martha said, yes, I know. That he will rise up at the last day. Jesus said, no. The resurrection and life is here with you. I am not talking of last day. I know some of us love some issues in our life and say, sweet, by and by. I will just continue to manage it. No, God has not called you into a life of management of sickness and diseases and infirmity. No. He says, you will decree a thing. When you ask in his name, and it shall be granted unto you. Please rise up again, Holy Spirit. You're going to pray. Jesus told, you see, let, let's, let's listen to this. Where was Lazarus buried? In the tomb. Right? There was a stone that was rolled to cover it. Now, do you think Jesus cannot command and the stones will magically be removed? But he needed their permission for them to remove the stone. There are some of us that there are stones that we have placed. And we are not ready to allow Jesus to remove it in order for him to do what he wants to do. We are going to pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I need your help to remove every stone of unbelief, every stone of doubt. Remove them in my life. Every stone that would not allow me to experience my miracle, let them be removed. Let them be removed. He can never be late to help you. He can never be late to assist you. Holy oh, Spirit. Remember me, O Lord. Remember me, O Lord. Remember me, O Lord. Right now, right now, right now. Remember me, O oh Lord. Remember me, O oh Lord. Remember me, O oh Lord. Right now. Remember me. Remember me, O oh Lord. Remember me, O oh Lord. Remember me. Verse 37, and you are going to pray. The people that gather with Mary and Martha, they follow them to the grave. And in verse 37, they were saying, If this Jesus really loved you, because you remember, I think uh, two or three verses before, Jesus was moved with emotion, and the scripture says, Jesus wept. I think verse 35, he wept. And those people said, If Jesus really loved this family. Why did he delay? I'm here to tell you that God can never be late to help you. Jesus groaned in the spirit not because he cannot help but because he knew that for the Father to be glorified People will see that miracle in your life. 
And so I want you to pray. What miracle do you need today? I don't want you to be like Martha that protested and said, Jesus, you can't do this. He's dead for days. What are those issues that you need miracle for? For someone, that miracle that you desire over the life of your children, receive it now. It does not matter what the professionals have said. I want you to believe the report of the Lord. Mary and Martha believed physical evidence, but Jesus told them, don't worry. I am the resurrection and life. And all he had to do was thank the Father. I want you to thank God for that miracle. Oh, that is about to come into your life right now. I want you to begin to thank him for that visitation of miracle in your womb, in your health. All I want you to do is to believe. It's as if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Maria Promosh. In verse 43, Jesus did something. He cried out with a loud voice. He says, Lazarus, hear the voice of your maker. Comfort. The Bible says, he who was dead for four days, that was supposed to have decayed, that was supposed to be smiling, had the voice of his maker. Bones came back together. Sinews came upon them. Life came into them without therapy. Breath came into them. And they came out of the grave. What is it that God cannot do? Please, I want you to raise up your hands. As I prophesy, if you are joining us online, or you are here with us, I want you to open up your hearts. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Breathe your name upon me. Just breathe upon us, just bring your name upon me, bring Just bring your name upon me, bring Receive the breath of God. I speak to someone's foundation. Hey, every darkness in your foundation come alive. Just breathe, just breathe, just breathe. Mare de la jaca da lebo, soto lo brengue de la idea lebo, shindaria da mababo. Marengue de ria marrabaya la bo, shake ria da braga mababo. Yahweh, Yahweh is your name, breathe. Receive the breath of life. In your brain, for someone, in your brain, receive the breath of life. Come alive. Come alive. For someone, your destiny is coming forth now. In the name of Jesus. Your time, your way is your name. Breathe. Just breathe. Just breathe your name. Your name upon me, 
Father, in Jesus' name, I stand upon your altar and I decree and declare your word into the life of every of my hearers. Lifting up their hands unto you, O oh God, for a miracle. Even Thomas Didymus mocked when Jesus told the disciples plainly, Lazarus is dead. I am going to wake him up. He said, let's go so that we can all go and die with him. I pray for someone. Oh, receive that miracle that will silence every mockers in your life, in your marriage, in the name of Jesus. Receive a touch of healing right now. Receive a touch of healing to your kidney, <laughs> to your liver, to your lungs. In the name of Jesus. Is there any part of your body that is sick? Jesus was wounded for our transgression and bruised for iniquity. The chastisements of our peace has been laid on him. And by strife, you have been made whole. And so I decree, receive wholeness in your body. Receive wholeness. Cancer, hear the word of the living God. It is written. Every plant that my father has not planted is not permitted, is not allowed in the life of this one. And so I revoke you in the name of the Lord of all, in the name of Jesus. Dry up! Dry up! Dry up! For someone, that spirit of near success, I terminate the oppression in your life. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy to the life of someone. Helpers of destiny. Joseph was in the prison. And God had to bring the butler and the baker to meet him in prison. For his head to be lifted up. I decree divine connection. Oh, receive it. Divine connection. Men and women that will help your destiny. I release them into your life. In the name of Jesus. For someone. The Lord wants you to tell your story. Because others will not be able to tell their stories completely. And it is the story of redemption. It is the story of redemption. The Lord said, I will redeem you. I will ransom you. From the hand of every oppressor. Just breathe your name upon me. Receive the breath of God. Receive the breath of God. In your marriage, in your home, receive the breath of God. The spirit of division is defeated. Receive the breath of God in your finances. Oh, I rebuke every spirit of struggle. Every spirit of futility, hard labor and bondage, I break their hold over your life. Oh, that breakthrough that you desire by the God of heaven, the one who says you will not see rain 
and you will not see clear. But I will fill this valley with water. Receive the breakthrough in the name of Jesus. For someone, I comfort your fruitfulness. <laughs> I call it forth. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Maure li da boshe talie, nenda bromo so tondolie, bali labre katamoso kotenderie. Oh, Linda Yalariam Babromo Sukatar, Lebre Yegedarama Sotondolie, Man Leke Tendeni Doshe Keralebo Sotondorie. For someone, just like that woman of Zarephath. You are preparing the last. You don't know where hope and future is going to come. The Lord said I should tell you. I have heard your cry. I have heard your tears. He says I will help you. My name will be glorified in your life. He says, out of that insufficiency, you will live many days. Mm. You will live many days. And you will become a blessing. You will become a blessing. I pray for someone. Mm. The work of your hand is blessed. I said the work of your hand is blessed. Amen. But I rebuke every mark of the enemy. Amen. Sign, symbol, and image of the evil one Amen. to cause you to toil and labor without results. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you are free. Amen. I decree you are loose. Go and begin to prosper in the name of Jesus. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Yahweh. For joining us today we hope your battle experience was blessed join us next time here in the sanctuary you can drive in carpool or reach out to our transportation team for assistance our services hold every sunday at 10 a.m stay connected via our social media platforms and visit our website at www.rccgbethelassembly.org see you next time